Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have for you a brand new instant wire design. It is directionless and extremely robust. Alright, let's take a look. So first of all, you have a two white section with observers followed by eight rails and then another section of observers. Across the map, there are multiple redstone lamps and pistons. Let's take a look at it working. As you can see, all the pistons with blocks are in the exact same state and all of them updated at the exact same time. It has a 4 game tick reset. I have an extremely simple encoder and decoder over here. Let's take a look. As you can see, I have on a gap. On, 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 gap, on. The exact same as I had in the encoder. Over here, I have an instant dropper line where the observers power over the dropper, except on the transition zones. In this case, I have the observer reading out from the ascending rail. First of all, let's take a look to make sure that these droppers are empty. Now, I'm going to put a single item in both directions. And now you'll see that both items should come out instantly. Again, this instant wire is directionless. And it can be updated from any of the powered rails that are on. Corners are extremely easy. Over here, I have a 4-way corner. Or I can have a T-intersection. The largest size that each individual module can be is 17 blocks wide. However, if you to go above 10 blocks wide for a repeating unit, it will be less robust as the rails in between the modules can get into a bit of a funky state. Alright, now to explain how this works. So first of all, I have a very basic rail layout with no observers. I'm going to turn on the top rail. As you can see, all these rails, 9 blocks from here, are turned on. And then I'm going to turn on this rail over here. I'm going to turn this off. And now, as you can see, none of these rails have turned off, even at the ends. And finally, I'm going to turn this rail off. This is a rail diode, Inspector Talon showed it to me, and while messing around today, I managed to figure out how to do this. So, now, the entire line is buttered, and if I have to hit this note block, everything will turn off. Now, with everything assembled, let's call this Observer A, and this Observer B. We should see that A fires first, then B, all within the same game tick. And to see this, I have common blocks telling me whether this or this fires first. With two modules connected together, we should see that for each individual module, A should fire first, followed by B. When I activate this module, we will see that the furthest rail updates first, so this module will fire. So 1A followed by 1B. 2A followed by 2B. If I were to power update this rail instead, we should see that 2A followed by 2B followed by 1A and 1B. Now, the reason why this instant wire is so robust is because each module butts itself. With a lot of the instant wires I've seen, what you need to do is you need to add a tail. And what happens is that you power all the way from the opposite end, all the way down to the tail, because the tail is the only part that can bud itself. And in those situations, if anything were to occur where there's a desync between one end to the other end, uh, the entire thing can clock. But because this buds itself is extremely, extremely difficult, if at all possible, for something like this to clock. Lastly, 
let's take a look at how to assemble this. So first of all, it is much easier to build it from a positive to negative direction, either X or Z, taking reference from the observer. So first of all, you're going to place the rails in this configuration. And lastly, place the rail like this. And what you can do is you can destroy this and place it again. Or you could power it with a block or anything else. When building from the negative to positive direction, it is much more difficult. So here's how you do it. So first of all, you place your rails like this. You're going to remove this rail. Place that there. Now we have the, the ascending rail in its proper direction. You're going to place this rail followed by that. Remove this and then this rail. Really, there's no reason why you would want to build this in a more difficult direction because it works the exact same way. In fact, so much so that you can have the modules mirrored and it'll still work. The only caveat with this instant wire design that I have found so far is that if you have the tail end like this, you could have a situation where this observer powers these rails before this observer can power these rails and finally reach the end. So you end up with a situation where these rails have been budded from that observer rather than this observer. To play safe, I would recommend that everybody build tail ends. So you just have this two byte module on either end and just update anywhere on the inside and use only the inside. All right, guys, that's about it. I'd like to give a special thanks to Inspector Talent for showing me the rail diodes. Without it, I probably would have never been able to come up with something like this. And I'm incredibly proud of this instant wire. I've had a lot of difficulty in the past because instant wires tend to clock or break in unusual scenarios. However, I've found that this instant wire is incredibly robust. The only times it ever clocks is when you build it, but it resolves itself. It's four game tanks. Uh, it can be used for instant dropper lines and I probably much more. If you have any problems with it in the future, please leave a comment. I would like to actually find out what other problems this might have or whether this is one of the perfect instant wires. Uh, so please leave a comment. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified, and last but not least, stay zen. Bye!